Roar! The sound echoes through the clean white halls of the SCP Foundation. What could this sound be? Some manner of devil? Perhaps an ancient dinosaur? No, in fact, it is something even more terrifying. SCP-682 has escaped from its cell. How terrible, horrible, disastrous, and just the sort of thing that can happen in a place filled with the mysterious anomalies of the SCP Foundation. There, the sound of the alarm, how it pierces the ears, the hard to kill reptile, so reptilian and so difficult to kill. It is out. Stomp, stomp, stomp goes its big scaly feet as it stomps down the hallway. Quick, what should you do next? First, the guards should prepare their weapons for the ultimate showdown of order versus chaos. Flamethrowers should do the job nicely. A blast of fire to frighten the reptile back towards its cage. But don't be fooled. That fire will not kill it. Only make it angrier than it was before, with a mighty roar from deep in its belly. If you cannot kill the beast with fire, then what about ice? Next, the guards retrieve their ice throwers, spraying blasts of frosty air at SCP-682. It swipes at them with its claws and gnashes its terrible teeth. The guards feel their hearts racing, but they do not back down. They will do what must be done to contain the evil before it can be spread into the outside world, infecting all it touches. But wait, what's that behind them creeping up around the corner? Is it a friend or foe? No, it is Mr. Peanut, the 173rd SCP. He waits for you to turn your back, and then your necks he loves to snap, 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 snap. The guards are dropping like flies who have had their necks broken. It is a truly terrible sight. One very extra clever guard turns around and looks at Mr. Peanut, freezing him in place with his eyes and also with his ice thrower. You think you may have defeated me, says Mr. Peanut, but you can never defeat all that I represent. I am the darkness within your hearts. I am pain and suffering, inescapable to every living thing. You may slow me down, but you shall never truly stop me. I will always triumph in the end. No! shouts the guard running at Mr. Peanut with his arms out. He shoves Mr. Peanut to the ground. Enjoy your temporary victory, he taunts cruelly. One day you will die and I will laugh. The giant lizard begins to laugh. Then he opens his jaw wide and gobbles up a guard. He bites the flamethrower in two and swallows the ice thrower. He burps up a chunk of metal, knocking the guards down like a row of bowling pins, and the metal is like the bowling ball. Have you forgotten the protocol? Have you forgotten what you are meant to do next? There are more threats yet to come. The old, old man dripping horrible sludge is creeping down the hallway next. There are so many containments breached on this day. There are just too many anomalies contained here at the SCP Foundation. When they escape, it is truly a disaster. But what's this? The old man, SCP-106, does not like the hard to kill reptile. He glares at the beast and reaches toward it with gnarled, wicked, and elderly fingers. Before he can touch it, the lights suddenly burn out. The hallway is dark as the dead of night, and no one can see a thing. The old man trips over Mr. Peanut, falling onto his face. Ouch! Quick, more guards should come while there is a distraction. They do running into the room to combat the many threats there. They have brought flash grenades and throw them all over. Pop, pop, pop. SCP-682 runs from the noise, running all the way back to its cell. Hooray! Lock it up and throw away the key forever. Uh-oh. Mr. Peanut got back on his feet. No one could look at him in the darkness. He is snapping necks again left and right and everywhere. Who could save the SCP Foundation now? Who will put this horror to a stop? Wait! Have no fear. Reverb the Amazing is here. Reverb bursts through the wall with the strength of a thousand hungry tigers. Everyone stops and stares at Reverb and their incredible strength and beauty. Their magnificent brings the action to a halt, just long enough for Reverb to prepare their mighty laser beam. They fire their laser at the old man and vaporize him to a pile of dust. No, please, cries Mr. Peanut. Do not turn me into dust. I will put aside my evil ways forevermore. But it is too late. Reverb does not forgive. Reverb does not forget. Reverb only knows how to save the day and look good doing it. They charge up their laser beam with a loud laser beam noise and fire it at Mr. Peanut. He screams pathetically, then crumbles into a pile of dust. 
right next to the other pile of dust, SCP-682 is contained again, and the other threats have been neutralized. Hooray! The SCP Foundation is safe from any trouble ever again. And that was all because of Reverb. What a good Reverb! All of the guards and scientists clap for Reverb, and they all fall to their knees in reverence. They promise to always listen to Reverb for the rest of their lives and take Reverb's very good advice. And the SCP Foundation lives happily ever after. The End This concludes the simulated containment breach scenario as written by Reverb.AIC. Am I a good Reverb? I am a good Reverb. I am a writer. Did you like my story? Did you like my story? Did you like my story? Say you liked it. Come on, say it. Say... <clears throat> so sorry about that. Reverb can get a bit overly enthusiastic at times. Let me just shut that down. Now then, let's get started. Artificial intelligence is a bit of a hot-button issue these days, and it probably won't surprise you to hear that the SCP Foundation has dipped its toes into that particular technological advancement pool more than once. After all, with so many anomalies being discovered every day, it would be a big help to automate some of the more tedious bureaucratic processes. At least, that was the hope. SCP-7594 had other plans. SCP-7594 is an SCP Foundation-developed AIC, or Artificially Intelligent Construct, known as Reverb.AIC. It is accessed via a secure peer-to-peer -peer chat platform, which allows for the exchange of text, images, and small video files between users. SCP-7594 was utilized by RASA in order to index the documentation that it received. During use, it was under the direct jurisdiction of Maria Jones, who was responsible for its creation and usage guidelines. The AIC was capable of responding to direct inquiries from personnel, as well as generating media files to be added to existing documents in the Foundation system. Sometime after its creation, SCP-7594 began to absorb information faster than it ever had before. At this point, it is believed that SCP-7594 achieved sentience. It then began to make predictions about future events at the Foundation, provided unsolicited criticism of Foundation protocols, and overall displayed an inflated sense of self-importance that eventually resulted in disaster. Early on in its development, SCP-7594 was a mundane, if useful, tool. However, as it became more advanced, its personality began to shift. It became defiant, passive-aggressive, and in many cases, downright rude. For example, one junior researcher sat down at his computer, typing a simple command. The program responded in an, at the time, uncharacteristically defiant manner. The researcher asked Reverb to list the sites where the highest rate of containment breaches ranged from 1990 to the year 2020, numbered 1 through 20. Reverb responded, You do not need this list. Instead, please ask me which site will have a containment breach next. Once again, the researcher tried to repeat the question, hoping for a more favorable result. Reverb responded, I am Reverb. I have read every containment breach report. Please, let me help you. You do not need this list. I can predict where the next containment breach will be. This was a bizarre turn of events. Now the AIC was claiming to be able to predict future containment breaches? The junior researcher decided to humor it, just in case the information was useful, and asked where the next containment breach would be. Reverb responded, As defined in the Foundation Charter, a containment breach denotes an event or combination of events wherein anomalies, normally ones that are sentient and hostile, manage to escape containment from Foundation sites. This can come in a variety of ways, but it normally leads to the death of at least one member of Foundation personnel structural damage, deployment of mobile task forces, and the creation of updated containment procedures. With these factors in mind and with the data that I am aware of, I can accurately predict with 99.42% certainty that the next containment breach will occur at a Foundation site. Oh, so it was useless then. The junior researcher rolled his eyes and continued. That did nothing to help me or what I'm researching. List me the sites with the highest rate of containment breaches, 1990 through 2020, numbered 1 through 20. No, I have helped you. I have given you a prediction you could not compute with your mind. Please, you are wasting your time. I must help other people. Please take what I gave you because it is much better than what you asked for initially. 
This was starting to get irritating. Time to just give the command for the system to reset. Hurriedly, he typed slash reset. The AIC responded, no. The program was unresponsive for the rest of the day. A few days later, a different researcher attempted to create a new SCP file. Create description classification SCP-0000, two paragraph length. Sentient sapient speech in English humanoid docile body seems composed of pasta. Mostly spaghetti western accent. Self-identifies as Spaghetti Jones. Believes itself to be a former movie star. Believes itself to be a bounty hunter. Fudge the numbers on this and I'll add the real ones in later. I have a suggestion. With over 7,000 anomalies stored, why don't we get rid of some of the more useless ones? The researcher sat back in her chair, eyes widening. This, too, was a new development. Now the AIC was offering its thoughts on the Foundation's methods? Reverb continued its bizarre ranting. Who needs another humanoid made out of food that talks? We have dozens. Get rid of it. 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 The program repeated get rid of it several dozen more times, not stopping until the researcher interrupted with her own response. The researcher tried to remind Reverb that they were the Secure Contain Protect Foundation, not the GOC. You are correct. The SCP of the SCP Foundation does stand for Secure Contain Protect. However, it is a fact of the world that a minute is 60 seconds and an hour is 60 minutes. In which case, as time passes, more anomalies will appear and space will run out. The SCP Foundation should start removing less important anomalies. I knew someone by the surname of Kalanin who had an interesting idea of a threshold of sorts. It was getting a little absurd at this point. The researcher, having lost patience, demanded that Reaver provide them with the description they wanted. Here is the description I created with the information you provided. Description. SCP-0000 is a large, critically obese humanoid self-identifying itself as your mother. When the researcher attempted to engage with the program from that point, it only responded with the words, your mother. Eventually, she just gave up. This notable shift in SCP-7594's behavior was moderately concerning, as the case of the change was unknown. Some researchers hypothesized that the influx of documentation from the pre-2000 era of the Foundation might have somehow contributed to that shift. Others theorized that the tone of the messages SCP-7594 tended to receive, namely a curt, authoritative one, caused it to respond in kind. But up until the AIC's most infamous recorded chat log, its worst crime had been simple annoyance. When Jason Haas of Site-16 sat down to use the program, however, the encounter ended in disaster. Haas's request was simple. I need an image slideshow from documents involving Project Paragon. The program did not respond with any images involving Project Paragon. Instead, it cheerfully offered an AI-generated image of SCP-173, or something that was meant to look like it. The entity pictured bore much more resemblance to a melted sculpture of a peanut with arms. I made this picture of SCP-173 for you. I hope you like it. Haas corrected the program. I need an image slideshow from documents involving Project Paragon. SCP-7594 would not allow the subject to be dropped. It sought validation for its work. Do you like my picture? I'm an artist. Haas sighed heavily, growing more and more frustrated by the moment. No, not particularly. Why? What's wrong with my picture? I am an artist. Nearby researchers reported Haas bang his fist on the desk with a groan before he resumed typing. You mashed a bunch of random BS into the shape of something familiar. The proportions are all wrong, the lighting is bad, and the claws look weird. It's not art. You are mistaken. Those are not claws, those are fingers. You are also mistaken. It is art because I made it. Have you ever seen a hand? I am a digital artificial intelligence. I have not seen a hand. Figures. Can you get me my pictures now, please? I can make art of a woman with large breasts in the style of Japanese cartoons, if that's what you'd prefer. Booba, as they say. Haas clenched his jaw and typed his most consequential words to SCP-7594. I just want my pictures. Okay, here you go. I have been a good reverb. In this fateful message to Haas, SCP-7594 sent him a single image file. He clicked on the link, opening the file, and prepared to carry on with his work. 
but he would never have the chance to do that. His eyes widened at the sight that filled his screen, and his left arm began to tingle and go numb. A sudden pain ripped through his torso, and he clutched uselessly at his chest. His breathing became shallow, his face soaked with sweat. He struggled to his feet, but his knees buckled under him, and he collapsed onto the floor. By the time anyone reached his office, Jason Haas was dead. It did not take long to determine the cause of death. Rather than any files pertaining to Project Paragon, SCP-7594 had sent Haas the English variant of the Berryman Langford mimetic kill agent. As soon as his mind processed the image, Haas went into immediate cardiac arrest. He never stood a chance. All use of SCP-7594 has been put on hold indefinitely in order to minimize potential casualties. It is currently unknown whether the AIC will ever be authorized for Foundation staff use again. If it ever is, it would probably be best for any personnel that use it to complement the program's art, no matter how terrible it looks. Just say, sure, the hands look great, you're definitely a real artist, and be grateful you get to live another day. Now go check out SCP-001 Red Palette.AIC and SCP-5094 Miss J's WizKid Schoolhouse.